Now, another thing that you saw from this slide is uh, Zipf's law. Overall, it's a pretty good fit to the data. Uh, it captures the frequencies, particularly, uh, particularly at, the, at, at, the, at the higher ranks, at the, at the higher frequencies. Uh, but the tail isn't particularly well captured. So um, there, is, uh, there is a generalization of Zipf's law called Mandelbrot's law, and it looks pretty much like Zipf's law, right? So Zipf's law, remember, frequency was a constant divided by rank. Now what we're doing is we're taking that rank and we're adding a parameter to it and raising the whole thing uh, to some power. So we're giving a little bit more flexibility uh, to, the, to the formula. So that's known as Mandelbrot's law. The Q and B are free parameters. Those are parameters that usually fit to a particular data that you, uh, that you have. <laughs> the really surprising thing is most of the time uh, the exponent ends up being somewhere around 1, which is, uh, which, is really, uh, which is really somewhat strange, right? When it's 1, you basically have Zipf's law again. Uh, so <clears throat> so uh, that's what it looks like for the, uh, for, the, for the documents in the U.S. Constitution, right? Uh, again, the black points are the frequencies of the words in the Constitution, and the red and the blue lines are two fits of Mandelbrot's law. And what you see is because you allow some flexibility with, uh, with the exponent, so uh, by the way, uh, this version of the fit is not actually using Q, so Q is set to zero, uh, but if you allow B to be slightly, um, uh, slightly smaller than one, uh, 0.9 or 0.92, you get, uh, you get a straight line that curves down at the right place and captures the words uh, at the low frequencies. So uh, if the goal is really to fit the data accurately, to accurately predict the frequencies for the low words, uh, then Mandelbrot's law gives a slightly, uh, slightly, slightly better fit. Um, I guess so this is a mistake. It's not frequent words, it's rare words that it gives a better fit for. Um, so uh, Mandelbrot's law, um, it's a generalization of Zipf's law. It's also one of a large family of statistical distributions called power law distributions, and those arise all over the place, right? You see them in networks, social networks, net actually networks of any kind. You see them in text. You see them in all kinds of population numbers. Um, it's, it's, it's a generic family. Uh, in different fields, it's known by different names. Uh, in dealing with text, people most often referred to it as Zipf's law, rather than any of those other names that are used in other, um, in other areas of science. 